Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. This time I'm going to talk about a mechanic that isn't overlooked per se, but more misunderstood, and that is camouflage and spotting. I include myself in this by the way, I honestly had no idea how this stuff worked in game until I created my tank review for the M4 Sherman. One deep, mathematically infested ra rabbit hole later, I think I understand it enough to put it across to you. Anyway, here goes. First, let's talk view range. This statistic is essentially how far your tank can see. I'll talk later about how this is different from how far you can spot enemies from, but they are closely related. In terms of whether the view range of a tank is good or bad, I would suggest you look at the table on screen. It shows the average base view range of a fully upgraded tank of each type and tier from 5 to 10 when the crew is trained to 100%. Feel free to pause this video and screenshot the table if you want to keep it. Outside of a massive change to the game, these averages are likely to stay relatively the same. The reason I put this table together is to help you with equipment and commander skill choices. You can use this table to determine whether your tank is above or below average, and then decide whether you want to further boost it above or try and counter its poor base stats. Note that all of the equipment and skills boost the view range by a percentage, so its better base view range will yield a greater increase. Camouflage forms the other part of this spotting equation. Each tank has its own base camouflage value attributed to it by the developers of the game for balance. Each tank has different values when stationary and moving, except light tanks. While this isn't exactly what this value does mathematically, you can think of it as reducing the view range of your enemies with respect to your tank. I think an example will help here. You're driving the M4 Sherman in this example, and you are up against a Tiger 1. Now, who will spot who first? Your Sherman has a view range of 370 meters, while the Tiger 1 has a view range of 380 meters. So, if we ignore camouflage, it's fairly obvious that the Tiger will see your Sherman first. However, we can ignore camouflage all we like, the game doesn't. Let's assume both tanks are moving towards each other. As such, they both have the reduced camouflage values attributed to each tank while moving. It's important to mention at this point that a heavy tank loses 50% of its camouflage value while moving, while a medium tank loses only 25%. The Tiger has a reduced camouflage value of 0.0334, while the Sherman has a reduced camouflage value of 0.094. What this means to you and me is the Tiger reduces the view range of your Sherman by 10.688 meters, meaning you will spot it from 359.312 meters away at maximum, while your camouflage factor in tandem reduces the view range of the Tiger by 31.02 meters, so it will spot you at 348.98 meters. So despite the higher view range of the Tiger, you will spot it first, provided there are no obstructions. Okay. Now that I've got the core concept, I'm going to talk about things you can do to improve your vehicle's camouflage factor. Be aware, this is where things get slightly complicated. To make things easier, I'm going to break it down into two parts. First, what can you do before you enter the battle? First up is commander skills. In the PC version, you can also train camouflage as a skill on your other crew members, further boosting its effectiveness. Camouflage is also a core skill of the crew and is therefore affected by skills that increase crew effectiveness like brothers in arms for example. The important thing to remember here is that like every other skill in the game, these skills increase the base value by this specified percentage. This means that a tank with a higher base camouflage value, like a light tank, will benefit more from having these skills than a heavy tank because the same percentage of a larger value is a larger increase. The same philosophy applies as I mentioned before for view range. You have to decide whether you want to boost an already above average value or make up for a below average one. I can't make the same table for camouflage as I did before because the same tanks have different camo values when stationary, moving and shooting and are affected in multiple ways. It would just get a little bit too complicated and just not nice to read. I can, however, give you a general idea of how the tanks perform camouflage wise. As you'd expect, heavy tanks typically are about as sneaky as the sun. Medium tanks are fairly decent, as we saw in the previous example. They can outspot heavies most of the time. Light tanks and tank destroyers have fantastic camouflage, but as mentioned earlier, tank destroyers lose camouflage when moving, whereas light tanks don't. Now we move on to the next thing you can do before battle, and that is mounting equipment. 
The primary piece of equipment available across all editions is the camo net. This activates once you stay stationary for about 3-5 to five seconds. You'll know it's active in game through an audio and video cue. This same piece of equipment has different bonuses depending on the class of the tank you're driving. Now for the part I never put together until very recently. Unlike the improvement of every other aspect of the tank that can be improved by equipment, skills, field mods or directives, camouflage is directly influenced by the equipment by a specific amount. Looking at the bonuses on screen you may think, like I had for years, that it does the same thing. It improves the base camouflage value of the tank by the specified percentage, just like the camouflage skill does. This is not the case. The, this equipment, along with the low noise exhaust system and commander's visage system in the PC edition, albeit that one, decreasing camo values and enemies, uh, affects your tank's camouflage value by that set amount regardless of the base value of your tank. Let's return to the same example, but this time let's say the tiger was spotted by an ally before you got close enough to spot them. You have the camera equipped on your Sherman, the tiger is moving so it doesn't matter whether it has one or not. You stop as soon as you see the tiger, allowing for your camo net to activate. So what changes in the game's calculations? Well, before your camo net activated, your stationary camouflage was as follows. This meant that the tiger had to get within 338.519 meters to spot your now still tank. However, once your camo net activated, the calculation now changes. Instead of multiplying the value by the new factor, it is added on to the final result of the calculation. If the game had multiplied the camouflage value by the percentage specified on the camo net, which is 10% for medium tanks, the tiger would have to close to 334.371 meters to spot your tank. That's not great value for an equipment slot that requires you to stand still for five seconds. Because, but because it adds the bonus afterwards, the tiger actually has to close to 305 meters, 305.519 meters to be exact, before it can spot you. This is an improvement in camouflage of over 30 meters. Before I move on to arguably the most important aspect of camouflage, I'll say a few words on the other two relevant pieces of equipment in the piece edition of the game. The low noise exhaust system provides a flat bonus to camouflage like the camo net. Its bonuses are not as large, but don't require you to stop moving. They are always active. Personally, I would say this equipment should only be used for scouts or tank destroyers that really don't want to get spotted. We're talking sacrificing all other stats, including gun performance and view range, just to make this camouflage bonus as large as possible. The commander's vision system, as mentioned before, is probably worth picking up if you need spotting damage. Its biggest benefit is the reduction of the camouflage of moving vehicles. Aside from light tanks, all vehicles have decreased camouflage when moving. A flat reduction of 10%, possibly 12.5% if you use the designated slot, will reduce the camouflage factor of all heavies, most mediums and most tank destroyers to 0% meaning your view range will not be reduced at all when spotting enemies in unobstructed line of sight. It will help the spotting enemies behind bushes, but for reasons I will now bring forward, you'll see that this aspect of the commander's vision system is not very powerful. So, as I said earlier, let's discuss the second part of improving camouflage, and that is what you can do in battle. First, the obvious stuff, hardcover like rocks and buildings provide a 100% camo bonus. It is impossible to be spotted through line of sight if there is a building between you and your enemies because you don't have line of sight. The exception to this is the proximity detection rule. Any tanks within 50 meters of each other always spot each other regardless of line of sight. Now, hopefully you have noticed that there are bushes and trees on the map that you can knock down. These aren't just for decoration, they also provide a flat camouflage bonus, much like the camo net and exhaust system. The difference is the size of the bonus. If you obstruct your line of sight with an enemy with a bush, you can expect a camouflage bonus of 5 all the way up to 65%, depending on the density of the bush. According to an unofficial source, bushes on average provide a 60% camouflage bonus, and a neat little trick to determine density is to just look at them. The values assigned to fuller, greener bushes are higher than those assigned to bushes with less or no leaves. The same goes for trees that you knock down, but they average a 35% camouflage bonus. 
Either way, these bonuses are a lot larger on average than the 15 to 20% reduction provided by the commander's vision system. Someone hiding behind the average felled tree is still going to have a flat 15% camouflage bonus against another player using CVS purely for being there before other modifiers are taken into consideration. It's no surprise that my next tip is to use bushes and trees wherever you can when you aren't spotted. These things will definitely tip the scales in your favour. The bonuses from each bush or tree stack, by the way, which means your camouflage factor can become well over 100%. However, there is still that minimum spotting distance of 50 metres, and any bush further than 15 metres away will also obstruct your lines of sight to enemies, so they will also receive that 60% camouflage bonus on average from your position. There is one final aspect I shall cover in this section, and that is shooting from bushes. You have probably noticed, hell, some of you have probably clicked off the video, gone into a game, drove your tank into a bush, shot your gun, got spotted, and died immediately. Others of you may have noticed that if you shoot from behind a bush, you're especially likely to be spotted. Why is this, and how do you stop it from happening? Well, it has to do with the game's calculations once again. I mentioned earlier that the bonuses for each bush stack if there are multiple between you and your enemy. While this is true, it becomes untrue when you fire your gun. Instead of stacking, only the highest camo bonus bush within 15 meters is taken into account. The rest of the bushes within 15 meters are completely ignored. On top of that, the selected bush's camo bonus is reduced by 70%. Bonuses from bushes further away than 15 meters stack as normal and are unaffected. Let's bring back the example again to illustrate the problem and discuss solutions. The tiger tank is closing in on your position. Thanks to my godlike powers, of course, two bushes appear just in front of your Sherman to prevent it from being spotted. These bushes are within 15 meters of your tank and provide the average bonus of 60% each, essentially meaning the tiger will only spot you when it comes within 50 meters. Is there a way for you to fire at this advancing tiger without being spotted? If you fire now, your cool 120% camouflage bonus will be reduced to 18% and your Sherman adopts its stationary shooting camo value of 0.0327, meaning the Tiger will be able to spot your Sherman if it is within 309.81 meters. The key here is to use the distance of the bushes to your tank. The first thing you do is reverse such that one or both of the bushes is further than 15 meters away from you. This is safe to do because you haven't fired. Both bushes are still providing their full camouflage bonus. Then, once you are far enough away, you're free to fire. In this example, you're far enough such that one bush is now the more than 15 meters away. You then fire and the same effects occur. The bush within 15 meters has its bonus reduced to 18% from 60 and your Sherman adopts its stationary firing camo value. The difference here is that the bush that is now more than 15 meters away from your tank is exempt from the equation and still provides its 60% camo bonus. This means even when firing through one bush within 15 meters, the tiger would have to be within 171.209 meters to spot you. Obviously, if you pull back a little more, both bushes would provide their full bonus, making it impossible for the tiger to see you when you fire. The game helps you in this respect. You may have noticed when entering sniper mode in your tank that nearby bushes become translucent, allowing you to see through them. The radius of this effect is, you guessed it, 15 meters. You don't have to go around measuring the distance of a bush from your tank, you could instead use this mechanic. Returning to the example again, you are pulling back in your Sherman. Initially, both bushes are translucent because you were within 15 meters of both of them. Then, the moment you pass beyond that distance, the bushes become opaque. You can still shoot the tiger because of the outline provided by the game. One thing you have to be wary of is that once you reverse more than 15 meters away, the bushes provide their full camo bonus to both you and the tiger. This means that after a number of seconds, typically between 5 and 10, the tiger will also become unspotted because the bushes are obstructing your line of sight to it as well. This is the basis of the bushwork mechanics that have been mentioned across YouTube, and they are right. The way you deal with tanks from bushes without being spotted is as follows. Start by spotting the enemy through the translucent bush you're hiding behind. Pull back further than 15 meters such that the bush becomes opaque in your sniper view. 
Fire as many times as you like. When or even before the enemy becomes unspotted again, drive forwards so the bush becomes translucent in sniper view again. This respots the enemy tank and restarts the timer. Rinse and repeat until the enemy tank is destroyed. Now that we have covered view range and camouflage value separately, it's time to put them all together. The way the game calculates spotting distance is through this equation. The game server then checks the distance between tanks at certain time intervals. This doesn't particularly impact your game, but for those who want to know, the general trend is the server performs less checks the further out you go. The result of this equation cannot exceed 40, 445 meters, by the way. This is because the server in-game doesn't check beyond 445 meters from each tank. It's computationally inefficient. Does this mean you should bother improving your view range beyond 445? Absolutely. As discussed previously, camouflage value is a big part of spotting. Each tank, depending on what they're doing and where they are, offsets your view range by a certain amount. Even if you run a commander's vision system, it's unlikely you'll be spotting enemies at 445 meters if your, if your maximum view range is 445 meters. If your goal is to maximize spotting, you should do exactly that and push your view range as far as you can to offset the camouflage values of the tanks as much as possible. Another point I'd like to bring forward is the points on the tank that mark the distances between them and therefore mark the threshold for the calculations the game makes. Each tank in the game has two vision points, one at the top, centered on the commander's hatch, and another at the base of the cannon, essentially where the gun sight is. These points form one end, if you will. The other is formed by a number of spot points on the tank. These points vary in number and location between tanks due to different hull design, lack of a turret, etc, etc, but are always situated on the tank such that the entire tank model fits within the box that they make. This is not the same as the tank's hitbox. Basically, they're on the corners and edges of the tank. So every interval, the server checks the distance between each vision point and each spot point. It then runs the calculation to determine the spotting distance, i.e. the view range of the vision point, reduced by the cam camouflage value of the spot point, including any environmental additions. If the distance between the points is less than the spotting distance, the tank becomes spotted. Why is this important? Well, this is where taller tanks may have an advantage or disadvantage, especially ones with good gun depression. The essence of this is that the height of the tank allows you to spot enemies over some obstacles and ridges. The increased gun depression allows you to spot on reverse slopes near the apex of hills or ridges. These two effects combine to make taller tanks in the game quite good at poking over ridges, especially if those ridges have bushes on them. You can then combine this with another trend that occurs within the game, and this isn't by accident by the way, this is part of the balance. Taller tanks typically have worse camouflage, but better view range than shorter tanks. There are of course exceptions to this rule, and the values, as we have seen, can vary dramatically depending on commander skills, equipment, and other environmental effects. The point is that if you aren't sure of an enemy vehicle statistics, you can use the rule of thumb. If your tank is taller than theirs, You'll probably have better view range but worse camo, so you'll need to use bushes to guarantee spotting them first. The final point I'd like to bring forward on this matter is that World of Tanks battles are not one versus one like the examples shown. More often than not, you'll be fighting multiple enemy tanks alongside multiple allies. The server checks these spotting distances between every tank at every interval, which can lead to frustrating results. Let's look one final time to our example. You're hiding behind the two bushes and are using them correctly, as demonstrated before, to shoot the tiger without being spotted. While in this process, a Panzer IV enters the engagement. This Panzer IV enters from a different direction, such that the bushes will not provide their camouflage bonus with respect to it. You continue doing what you're doing, but as you poke up to spot the tiger again, your Sherman's mobile camo value is not good enough to stop you from being spotted by the Panzer IV. Here, you would also spot the Panzer, so it is obvious to you why you were spotted. However, what if you couldn't see the Panzer in this position? For the purposes of the example, I'll conjure up another convenient bush for the Panzer. It is now close enough to see you when you move and is receiving the 60% average camo bonus from the bush, meaning you can't see it. Again, you poke up to spot the Tiger, but shortly after you move to do so, your sixth sense alert goes off. The Tiger can see you and you're at high risk of being destroyed. 
Now, from your perspective, the tiger has hacked into the game itself, messed with the camo values of the bush, and spotted you through them. The game is broken and not fair. The reality is, unless that Panzer IV shoots within 15 metres of that bush, they will be invisible to you. You, on the other hand, have no cover between yourself and the Panzer IV, and are relying on your mobile camouflage alone. Once this happens, there isn't really a way to stop it. If you find yourself in this situation, I would suggest you either disengage from the fight or find hard cover. If you can't see your opponent, try and use your sixth sense to determine their vague direction by edging out behind the cover. You'll probably find out where they are anyway because it's extremely likely that an enemy tank in the Panzer IV's position will choose to shoot you. In short, if you get spotted behind multiple bushes, someone else is looking at you from a different direction. And that about does it for this video. Thank you for sticking with me through all those numbers and equations and the like. I hope you come away with a little bit more knowledge about spotting and camouflage on World of Tanks thanks to this video. I didn't talk that much about directives and field mods because I haven't really had much experience with them and I didn't really want to say the wrong thing. If you somehow liked the video, please give it a like and I intend to produce content like this for World of Tanks for a while. So if you're interested, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.